Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to do like the final review of the Viltrox 13 millimeter 1.4 lens. First of all, just let me state right off from the beginning that you're either going to love this lens or absolutely hate this lens, depending on your shooting style. But before we get started, I'd appreciate it if, you, if you've watched any of the previous videos about the Viltark 13 millimeter 1.4 that I've done. I'd appreciate it if you'd drop a like or go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh, to catch more videos uh, like this one you're watching today. It would really mean a lot to me and it really helped the channel grow a lot. So I thank you very much for that. Let's start off by talking about the build quality of the lens. If you ask me, the lens has an overall cool look to it. And I do like that about this particular lens. Like it really looks cool on your camera, if you ask me. And that's something to think about. Also, it has a 60 millimeter filter thread. And uh, I, I like that particular because I have all my lenses from Sony. Most of them take a 67 millimeter filter thread. I don't have to carry anything extra or out of the ordinary uh, with me when I use this lens. It has a really nice solid feel to it. Uh, and it feels premium. Uh, if you've ever held a, a nice lens, like a you know a premium Sony lens or a premium Can Canon lens or a premium Fuji lens, this feel, this lens has a similar feel to it. Like it doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel plasticky. It's nice and solid and has a great feel to it. Um, so overall, build quality of this lens is quite good, if you ask me. Now let's talk about the handling and weight of this lens. Like this lens has a really nice aperture ring on it and uh, the click on it is really pronounced so you're gonna like if you're gonna be changing the aperture you know exactly where you are how many clips, you, clips you've gone and you're not gonna hit this by accident and changing it while shooting it has a nice positive click it takes a little bit of force to get it over to click it so that's good because uh, you're going to know exactly where you are and you're not going to hit it on accident. Saw some earlier reviews, they talk about how big and heavy it was, but I haven't found that to be a problem at all. Now my Fuji XX10, it has a deeper grip on there. I think that it really handles well, it balances well on this particular camera. You could shoot for quite a while using this particular combo. Now let's talk about the autofocus a little bit. In my opinion, you can expect about the same amount of performance out of this Viltrox lens as you can any other Fuji lens. It's quick, it's silent, and it does a good job of autofocusing. When you're using this lens and uh, shooting pictures with it and photos and you're using single point autofocus, uh, like I say, the autofocus is quick and silent. Like you can go from here to there, to here to there, and uh, it, 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 uh, it autofocuses rather quickly and uh, quite confidently as well. Uh, there's not a lot of hunting and stuff like that. Uh, the problems I had with autofocus are more to do with the Fuji system than it does anything to do with the lens. And that's face and eye auto detect. It seems like Fuji, uh, Fuji cameras uh, in general struggle, especially this XX10, I don't know about some of the other ones, uh, struggle with the face and eye auto detect. And it has a hard time keeping up. Uh, if there's any kind of weird lighting, it will lose your eye for sure. And if you have sunglasses on, you might as well forget it. Now let's talk about the picture quality. By no means am I a pixel peeper. Like I'm not gonna take a picture of a brick wall and blow it up 3000 times and look at chromatic aberration and all this and that. That's not kind of, that's not what I, what I do. Pretty much I have an eye test and do the pictures look good or do they look bad? And I'll just say that the uh, Viltrox 13 passes the eye test with flying colors. I think the picture quality out of, coming out of it is just great. The 1.4 lets a lot of light in. You can get a really, really soft, nice, pleasing background with the, your photos and videos. It also renders the Fuji colors just as well as any other Fuji lenses, like the pictures I've taken and uh, various uh, film simulations have all look basically the same as a regular old Fuji lens. Now let's talk about the photo qualities of this lens. I mean, this thing is wide, like wide, wide, like, you know, you're taking a picture, you have to scoot a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, I mean, to get what you want. I mean, it's kind of crazy how wide it is. Uh, never had anything that's quite wide on, on the Fujifilm before. 
it's kind of a little bit of a different experience. And like I say, this is a part of the lens that you'll either love or you'll hate it for sure. Because you can just get pretty much everything in the shot that you, you need or want. Like when I went up on campus, I got a cool shot of the, the gardens out there and pretty much got the whole gardens in the frame and also the library in the background, which is a really cool shot. And uh, you'd have to have a really, really wide lens to do that. And a 13 millimeter was a great lens to do that with. Also, I took the reflecting shots. Like when I was taking, when I was shooting those shots, I was like, man, I wish I had a zoom, zoom lens so I could zoom in just a little bit. But then I realized that in order to get the reflections and the buildings in the frame, I needed a super wide angle lens. This lens uh, came in and did that job nicely. I'm glad I had this lens on me. So what I like doing with this lens is taking really close and wide shots. You can use that 1.4 aperture and just completely blow out any background. And uh, that really creates for some really interesting shots and, and a really um, a different way to tell a story, if you ask me. Like you can get really close, get something to focus, blow the background out and get a lot in the frame. And uh, it really, you can take the mundane and uh, make it fairly interesting, if you ask me, take, taking shots like that. Like uh, some of these shots that I took with it just around my house, I just took some a picture of flowers that were sitting up on a, on a bench. And uh, I thought they came out really neat, you know, and that was, that was due to the really close and really wide uh, shallow depth of field look. And... Uh, that's a really cool way to shoot, and I, and I do enjoy that part of this, this lens. Now let's talk about the video aspect of this lens. Again, I think the video looks great coming out of this lens. The only problem you're going to have is with the IBIS. And, uh, you know, if you're just going around shooting various things and, you know, running, gunning, don't have a gimbal, just want to kind of shoot, you know, life as it happens, you're going to get some of that corner wobble. There's just no doubt about it. There's no mode that I've found on this uh, XS10 that would eliminate the corner wobble. Now I used IBIS and the uh, digital image stabilization. That seemed to work the best, but again, it was prevalent in every every mode that I used. So you don't have to just you know roll with it or take or try not to shoot those kind of shots at all with this lens. You know that's pretty much all you could do. You could uh, you could put it on a gimbal. But I'm never going to do that. That's just not my style of shooting. And, but for people who use gimbals and like gimbals and use gimbal in workflow, this would probably be great for gimbal work. And again, I think the uh, wobble, uh, it's not an indictment of the lens or the camera. It's just what you get with the super wide angle lens and the camera with the IBIS. Uh, I just don't, that, that's just the way it works. There's nothing wrong with the lens on that part. There's nothing wrong with the camera on that part. That's just the nature of the game there. Now, speaking of the 2.8, let's just do a little bit of a comparison. Like the 16 2.8 versus the Viltrox 13, the 2.8 is just going to be a lot smaller and a lot lighter. Um, so that's something to keep into consideration. Um, while the 13 does handle well, it is comfortable on the camera. <laughs> Yeah, once you once you switch over to that 16.2.8, it feels like a little bitty toy on your camera. It's so much smaller and lighter. The autofocus is going to be about the same. Uh, the 1.4 will obviously be better in low light. But uh, here's kind of a weird comparison that I noticed when I kind of first started shooting with these two lenses. If you look at these two shots here, they really do look about the same. I mean, if you take a really close look at the background, they're about the same amount of blurriness going on in the background. Even that one's at 1.4 and one's on 2.8. And that's because of the focal length. Uh, the, the, the 16 2.8 is a little bit, brings you in a little bit closer, so it blows out the background a little bit more than at the same distance uh, as a 13 millimeter 1.4. So just something to keep in mind. You can kind of get similar shots with these two lenses, uh, even though they're quite different. In summary, I think a Viltrox did a really, really good job with this lens. I can't think of any weaknesses other than just the inherited weaknesses of a 13 millimeter lens, like the corner wobble. And there's nothing you can do about that. But other than that, I think the, the Viltrox 13 millimeter uh, is just a great lens. Uh, but if you like shooting wide and you shoot with Fuji, this is the absolute lens that you've been waiting on. Am I going to be keeping this lens for my own personal use? And I'm, I'm sorry to say, but I'm probably not going to be keeping this lens. And there's a couple of different factors that come into play there. 
mainly because I'm not a strictly Fuji film shooter. Like I'll shoot F Fuji film for a month and then I'll put it on the shelf for two months. It's just not my everyday normal carry camera. Uh, so for me, the added expense of you know, having the 16 2.8 and then buying this lens on top of that uh, just becomes a little bit of an unnecessary cost. You get the 16 2.8, it's good enough for what I do. Uh, but if I have, if I was choosing between the two, I would definitely get the the Viltrox 1.4. But since I already had the 16 2.8, there's virtually no reason for me to get this, the 13 1.4. Uh, but if I was a Fuji film shooter, I would definitely pick up the the Viltrox 13 millimeter 1.4. I mean, it's really that good. Even if I had the 16 2.8, I would definitely get it. Here are a few thoughts on the Fuji and the Fuji ecosystem. My question is, is are they going to fix the face and eye detect on the Fuji X-H2 that's due to come out any, any time now? For me to continue on with the Fuji system or to, to possibly switch over to all Fuji, they're definitely going to have to improve the autofocus, the face and eye detect, the tracking, all that need to be addressed in order for me to continue to shoot Fuji and maybe possibly switch over from my Sony. Hopefully with the new X-H2, they'll improve those functions of the camera. Will Sigma and Tamron continue to release lenses in the Fuji uh, lineup? To me, the additional third-party lenses make the Fuji film ecosystem just a little bit more attractive. Hopefully they'll continue to release more lenses in the future. And what will the availability of the Fuji hardware be in the future? Like. How long has the 70 to 300 been backordered? I mean, forever, forever. I mean, they finally want to kind of get things caught up here so we can, you know, actually get stuff, uh, the newer stuff and get it tested out. Uh, that seems to be a huge problem with Fuji right now. So hopefully they get that figured out soon. In my opinion, Fuji really needs to answer these questions uh, and soon, but I guess they will in due time, but uh, time's a ticking, you know? So let me know down in the comments what you think of the Viltrox 13mm 1.4 and if you think uh, Fujifilm is prime for an APS-C takeover. Hopefully they will because I really do like the Fujifilm system. Anyhow, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.